What's up YouTube? Welcome back to another edition of Coding with Robbie. I'm your host Robbie and in this video we're going to be building a Shopify Ajax cart drawer. All right, so here's what we're going to be building. You can click cart and it's going to automatically slide open and my cart's empty right now so we get a little notification of that. Um, you can add the cart and it's going to add it and open up. You can add multiple items. You can update the quantity. You can remove stuff and you'll notice the subtotal down here is going to automatically update. And if there is automatic discounts, it's gonna show that. And uh, if you click checkout, it's gonna take you straight to checkout. So if that looks cool, make sure to stick around, make sure to like and subscribe, and make sure to check out the sponsor of this video, Gadget. So Gadget is the easiest way to build, host, and launch a Shopify app. It pretty much takes the headache away and handles all the annoying parts for you. So it's gonna handle infrastructure, it's gonna handle OAuth, registering webhooks, it's gonna handle wiring up the front and back end, and it's even gonna handle deployment. So with Gadget, you're getting a fully hosted backend and embedded app with Shopify Polaris. And it meets all the App Store standards, so you can submit it there, no problem. And it really lets you hit the ground running and focus on your business logic and designing your embedded UI. So Gadget helps you build more but code less and try it for free on your next Shopify project. So the link is gadget.dev to get started and tell them Coding with Robbie sent you. Link's also in the description. And uh, yeah, let's get back to the video. So creating a cart drawer is actually really simple and you're basically taking a lot of the cart template and just making it available everywhere. So here's the documentation for the cart template. And if you look through this, they give you examples on how to loop through items, how a cart form should look, uh, how to add remove buttons, how to add quantity fields. And uh, yeah, we're basically gonna be taking a lot of this and combining it with the cart Ajax API, which is right here. And I'll put all the links in the description. But uh, the Cart Ajax API has methods to add the cart, fetch the cart, update the cart, change the cart, clear the cart. And uh, yeah, we're basically just putting the two together and making it look nice. So let's get started. So here's my theme right here. There's zero JavaScript on this page. Um, on the collection page, we got some add the cart buttons. And uh, yeah, we're gonna hook this up. So let's create our section. Let's go sections, new file. And I'll go cart drawer dot liquid. And then a section needs a schema. So let's go schema and end schema. And then a schema is just some JSON that describes the section. So let's give our section a name, which will be cart drawer. And then a schema can also have settings, which we'll just leave as an empty array right now. And then maybe at the top here, let's just go h2 your cart slash h2 just to make sure it works and now we want to render this section on every single page so to do that a good place would be within theme.liquid so this is kind of the root uh, layout file of the whole theme and let's just go to the bottom here right above my scripts file and just go section and we want to render our cart dash drawer section so hit save on that and we should now see it on the page so if i refresh and scroll to the bottom, uh, you can see it right here, your cart, so it is working. So now let's basically just build a cart template in this section. So we got maybe a header up there and then we're gonna wanna loop through all the items. So let's go for item in cart.items, end for, and then maybe for each item we wanna show the image. So let's go img src, and we want item.image, and then let's add the uh, IMG URL filter and say we want 200 pixels wide. And then for the alt, let's just go item.title. And then we want to display the uh, product title right here. So let's go H3. It's gonna be item.product.title. And then if you're unsure which uh, properties are available on all these different objects, it's all in the documentation so right here. We say, hey, we're on the cart object. We can access all these properties. So we're looping through items right here. And then uh, if you go to items, it says, hey, that's an array of line items. And if you go to line item, we have all these properties. So I did a uh, line item dot product, which is right here. And that's a product. So we go to product and I have all these properties. So yeah, it's all in the documentation, which I'll put in the description. But we're getting the product title, we're gonna want the variant title. So let's go down here, make it a P tag and it'll be variant title. And 
like that. Uh, maybe we want to remove button, so we can go a href equal to item dot url to remove. Maybe we'll just put remove inside there. We're probably going to want to show the price of the item, so we go item dot price money, and this is going to be the price of a single item. And if we do item dot final line price, it's uh, the price times the quantity. So that looks pretty good. What else do we want? Let's see here. We got the title, image, variant title, remove. Uh, maybe we need the item quantity. We could go input name is equal to quantity. Value is equal to item dot quantity. That looks good for each item. So we're going to need a checkout button. So let's create a cart form. So let's go form and it's going to be the cart form, which we have to pass the cart object and then end form. And let's throw all these items within the form and then we can put our checkout button at the bottom here. So let's go button type is equal to submit. And then this needs a special name property of checkout. There we go. And uh, maybe we want to show the total of all the items in cart. So you could do that with item dot total price. And then uh, if there's any automatic discounts, you can see those with the uh, item, not item. This should be cart. And this should also be cart dot total discounts. Uh, maybe we want to show the item count up here. So we could go cart dot item count. And uh, I think that's pretty much most of what we'd want inside our cart. So let's go check that out. If we refresh, you can see right here, we're getting the item count. What are these zeros? That's the, um, the total price and the total discount. So let's add the money filter to those. And then... Uh, Let's see what it looks like when we add something to cart. So there we go. Now it's properly formatted. We add the cart. You can see uh, we got the item count right there. We're looping through the items and displaying the image, the product title, the variant title, a remove link, the price of the entire line item, uh, the quantity field right here. And then we got total discounts and total price. So you probably want to check if the cart is empty also. So uh, we could actually do that out here. We'll go if cart dot empty question mark. If it's empty, we'll show something. Otherwise, we'll uh, show everything else. So, and if and then maybe here we'll just go your cart is empty. Hit save. Let's try that out. So I refresh, I get my cart. If I remove that item and go back, we see your cart is empty. So that's pretty much all the liquid that we're gonna use within our cart. Now, a lot of this is gonna be styling. So I went ahead and pre-styled everything just to save time, but it's all the same liquid that I just showed you. So let's take a look at what I'm gonna be starting out with. So there's a ton of extra divs just for styling purposes. But look, we got the item count right there. We're looping, we got the cart form. Uh, we're checking if the cart is empty. And then we're looping through the items and displaying the image. Uh, you know, the product title, we're linking it to the item page. Here's the variant title. Here's the item quantity. Here's uh, the item final line price. And then down here at the footer, we got uh, total discounts, total price, and the checkout button. So everything I just showed you, just a bunch of extra divs and styling and classes. So let me show you how this looks. Let me add the active class to it. Save it and then we'll refresh and take a look. So here's how it's gonna look. I'll refresh and it's empty right now. So let's actually get rid of that class and add something to cart. So let's just add this uh, shirt right here. And then let's add that active class back. Wait a second. And I'll refresh and here's how it's going to look. And then if you toggle that class, it has a pretty cool animation. 
So let's go to cart drawer right here and just toggle that class. And here's how it looks. So it fades in and slides in nice. But yeah, basically we're gonna make this work now. So nothing's hooked up inside it. When you click these add to cart buttons, it doesn't open or anything. We got zero JavaScript so far. So let's get into it. So let's remove this active class right here. And then let's open up our scripts file. And uh, the first thing we're gonna do is just make it so when we add the cart, it does it with Ajax and opens our cart drawer. So let's do that. So we gotta find all the add the cart forms on the page. So if we look inside dev tools, you can see it has slash cart slash add. So let's select based on that. So let's go document dot query selector all. And we want all forms that have the action of slash cart slash add. And then we want to loop through these. So dot for each. And for each form, we're going to add an event listener. So let's go form dot add event listener. We're going to listen to the submit event. And this is going to receive a function right here. And the function receives the uh, event. And on the event, we can prevent the fault. And this just stops it from doing a normal form submission. So now if we go back and we refresh, <clears throat> we click add the cart, nothing happens. So now we can add it with Ajax and then um, open our cart. So let's go down here and let's just go submit form with Ajax. And I have a previous video where I cover this uh, more in depth. We're gonna go through it pretty quick. But basically we're gonna use the fetch API and we want a, the URL to be slash cart slash add. The second argument is an object. We give it a method, which is post, and this matches uh, the cart form right there. And then the second argument is the form data. Uh, we call it body. And then we just go new form data and pass this the form element, which we have right here. And uh, this is a promise, so we can make this async and await by adding async and adding await right here. So it awaits for this promise to finish. And that should be adding the cart with Ajax. So let's go back and we'll refresh a couple times. Let's pull up the network tab. You can see when I click add the cart, it sends a post request and we get 200 back. So it's adding the cart successfully. And if we, if we uh, refresh, you can see we got two in the cart now. So now let's uh, have it open our cart drawer. So let's go right here. We'll just go open cart drawer. We'll go document.querySelector. We want our dot cart drawer. And then we want to go class list dot add. And then if you remember, it was dot, uh, it was a cart dash drawer dash dash active. Just like that. And now it should uh, open it when we click add the cart. So let's refresh, add the cart, it opens it. But you'll notice that it's not gonna show the, uh, the new item we added because we have to actually update the cart also. But before we do that, let's make it so we can close the cart. So uh, let's make it so when we click this X, it closes. So uh, let's go down here, we'll go document.querySelector all. And we want to get this X right here, which is uh, cart drawer header right close. And then I also want to make it so when we click this background, it'll close. And the background is just the root div. So just dot cart drawer, the so comma dot cart drawer. And then let's loop through these. Let's go for each, uh, I'll just call it L. And then let's go l.addEventListener, click. And then when someone clicks it, we want to uh, run this function right here, which closes the cart. And uh, it's just the opposite of opening it. So instead of adding the class, we're gonna remove the class. And that should close it. So let's try it out. So I add the cart, it opens it. I hit the X, it closes. No, it doesn't. Let's refresh again. Do we have any errors? Okay, I think I just didn't wait long enough for it to update. So add the cart, opens, hit the X, it closes, add the cart, click the background, it closes, add the cart, and then click this part, and it still closes. So what's happening is we're clicking this white box, but it also clicks through to the background element also, so we have to stop that from happening. And that's easy to do, we just go 
document dot um, query selector and let's get dot cart drawer and then let's add an event listener to it and we want to listen for clicks and then this gets a function which gets the event and on the event we just go e dot stop propagation and this just stops it from clicking through to the elements behind it so now if we go back let it update and refresh i can add the cart and i click this white part and it's still closed <laughs> so uh let's try it again click it click the white part it's closing do i have an error what do i do wrong document dot query selector dot cart drawer oh sorry this should be dot cart drawer box because we're clicking the box not the uh the background so let's try it again refresh add the cart click the box and it doesn't close but if i click the background it does so it's working pretty good so now let's make it so it opens when we click this um cart icon if we take a look at that it just has a an href to slash cart so let's go document dot query selector all we want all anchor tags which have href is equal to slash cart let's loop through them with dot for each and for each anchor we want to add an event listener we want to listen for clicks and this is going to get a function which receives the event and on the event we want to go prevent default so let's prevent it from redirecting us to the cart page and then we want to open our cart which uh, we did right here. So let's actually put this in its own function. So let's go up top. I'll just go function open cart drawer. And then let's move this line inside there and call the function right here. So open cart drawer. And then we also want to call it down here now. So open cart drawer. And then while we're at it, let's move the close also to its own function. So function close cart drawer. And uh, where's the code to close it? Um, right here. So let's copy this, paste it in here. And uh, I'm gonna put that all on one line. Oh, it doesn't let me, okay. And uh, let's call close cart drawer uh, right in here. All right, let's make sure everything still works. So let's go back, uh, let's refresh. I click this card icon, it opens. I click the background, it closes. Click the box, nothing happens. Click the X, it closes. So it's working good. We can open and close our cart. And now the next thing we have to do is make it so the cart updates when we add the cart. So say I add, uh, let's add something new, this dark denim top. You can see it's not there. So let's make a new function. And we'll just call it update cart drawer. And uh, in here, the first thing we got to do is uh, fetch a new version of the cart. So the easiest way to do this is just to fetch a new version of this entire section after we add the cart. So let's do that. And that's easy to do. We just go fetch. And then the fetch a section, you can just go slash question mark section underscore ID is equal to and then the name of the section. So ours was cart dash drawer. And then this is gonna return uh, the HTML as a plain text for this whole entire section. So this is gonna be async and await. So let's make this an async function. So we can await on this promise to finish. And let's actually assign this to a variable called res. And then uh, with the response, we have to go const text and we have to go await res.text and that just lets us see the text that's returned from this uh, ajax call right here so it's just console.log text and then let's call this function uh where are we at so we're adding the cart right here let's call it right here update cart And then let's await on this to finish before we open the cart. So let's go await and uh, see what we get. So let's go back here. I'll open up console. I'll refresh and now I hit add the cart. And you can see we're getting all the text for the entire section. So now we're gonna convert this 
from uh, plain text to HTML. And how I like to do that is just, uh, I'll create an empty element. So let's just go const div is equal to, um, let's go uh, document.create element. We wanna create a div element. And then let's go div.innerHTML is equal to all that text we got back. And what that does is now it should be HTML, which we can query on and do all kinds of stuff with. So let me show you. So here's how it looks when it's plain text. Refresh a couple times. And now if I add the cart, uh, we get an error. HTML is not defined. So let's actually call this HTML instead of div. Okay, update, refresh, add the cart. Add the cart. Div is not defined. Where am I? Okay, this has to be HTML also. My bad, made a typo there. Or a mistake, let's refresh, add the cart. And there we go, now we get it as HTML. So what we're gonna do is uh, that div is basically the entire section. So I'm gonna get um, the box element and then I'm going to uh, replace the one that's on the screen. So if we look at it, um, the box element is basically just cart drawer dot inner HTML. So let's go const new box is equal to, and then we got HTML, which is the HTML that got returned from this call right here. Dot query selector. We want dot cart drawer. And then we want the inner HTML, which is just that box element. So here's the new box, and now we gotta replace it um, on screen. So let's go document.query selector. And we want our dot cart drawer that's on the screen. And then we wanna go dot inner HTML. And we'll just replace whatever's there with our new box. Just like that. And uh, let's see if this works. We should see uh, the new items now. So let's just uh, clear our whole cart. Let's go clear cart slash clear.js. That's just gonna empty my cart. I'll go back. And now I add the cart and we see the item and I add another item and I see it. But now what's happening is this is a whole new cart box. So, uh, oh wow, it still works. Hmm. Uh, I thought the uh, X click wouldn't work, but I guess it is. So we'll come back to that if issues arise. But now we gotta make uh, kind of these quantity selectors work within the cart. So let's add a new uh, event listener here at the bottom. I'm just gonna minimize all this stuff. And uh, let me just put a comment here so we don't lose it. Update quantities. All right, so let's take a look at our cart. And if we go here, you can see we have plus and minus buttons with uh, the class cart drawer quantity selector minus and cart drawer quantity selector plus. And then the parent div is a uh, cart drawer quantity selector. So I'm gonna grab that class and let's go document dot query selector all. Let's go dot cart drawer quantity selector. And then we want the button which are inside of that. We wanna loop through those with for each and for each button, we want to run a function. Uh, so now what do we want to do? We want to update the quantity. So how can we do that? Here's where we're going to use this cart API right here. So the one I like to use is um, slash cart slash update dot JS. And there's a few different ways you can update. So uh, you can do it by the line items key. You can do it by the variant ID. Uh, you can just pass an array of uh, quantities like this. Uh, we're gonna do it by line item key. So the first thing we gotta do is uh, get line item key, get new quantity, and then we got a Ajax update. And then once that's done, we gotta update card again. All right, so how can we get this line item key? We should probably just add a data attribute to our element here. So let's take a look. Right here, we're looping through the items. 
Um, we got the uh, quantity selector right here, and I'm gonna add. Um, where should I put it? Mm, let's just put it uh, on the root element of the item, which is all the way up here. Let's go. Data line item key is equal to item dot key. And let's make sure that's working. Let's go back and uh, refresh. Let's open the cart, take a look at the items. And you can see we get those keys right here. So now we gotta basically, we're clicking one of these buttons right here. We gotta crawl all the way up until we get to this data line item key and then get the value from it. So uh, this is gonna be pretty sloppy, but hey, I'm gonna do it anyway. Uh, let's just go button dot parent element dot parent element dot parent element uh, let's see const root item is equal to and then let's just keep adding those till we get to it I guess so console.log root item so there's a better fancier way to do it but I don't know this will work fine though so let's see what are we getting right now whoops Okay, so see what's happening? It is removing some of those event listeners when we re replace the box. So let's uh, create a new function actually. So function add cart drawer listeners. And then uh, let's move all these inside there. So we're gonna have to re-add the quantity ones every time. Uh, Let's move that inside. We're gonna have to re-add. Uh, here's that stop propagation one. And uh, here's the close one. We're gonna need that. And then I figured out why that X was working before when I said, oh, I'm surprised it's working. It's because this one where we're stopping, where we click through the background got removed. So it's allowing it to click through to the background again. And uh, the only one we don't have to re-add is this guy right here, which uh, opens it when we click the cart hrefs, and this one where this is for the uh, add the cart forms. So now we got all those event listeners in this function, which we want to run on page load. And then we also want to run it when we update our cart. So let's go to the bottom here and after we replace the HTML, we add the listeners again. Let's see if that fixes it. Let's go back. Um, let's refresh, add the cart. And now if I click that white part, it doesn't close anymore. And if I click the X, it does. So now we can click that quantity button and see what element we're getting. So console, if I click quantity, I'm getting cart drawer item main flex. So let's see, cart drawer item main flex. So we still gotta go up one, two more. So let's go back. <laughs> so don't judge me for this, I know it's bad, but we're doing it. Parent element dot parent element. So that should be getting us the root item. Let's verify it. Go back. I click and we don't get nothing. Go back, click. I'm not running it on click, am I? So before we do that, let's go button dot add event listener. And on the button, we want to listen to clicks. And then when we do click it is when we want to do all this stuff right here. So let's move that inside and let's try it now. Now refresh, add the cart. Let's click one of these quantities and now I get that root item which we can access the line item key. So let's get the key down here. Let's go const key is equal to and uh, we go root item dot get attribute. And then we want data line item key, which is what we named it. If we go back here, you can see we called it data line item key. All right, and now we can call that Ajax method. So let's go back to the documentation. And uh, we're gonna do cart slash update right here. 
And we're going to do it by line item key. So how do we do it? Oh, I don't want that. Here's an example of what we want. Now let's just try it like this. I think I remember how it's done. Let's go fetch. And it's going to be slash cart slash update dot js. And this is going to be method post. And then this time we're sending JSON. So we have to look up how to do that. I don't remember off the top of my head. Let's just go fetch API post JSON and see how you do it. Stack Overflow always has the best answers. And uh, I just have to add these headers right here. So let's grab that, add the headers. And then for our body, we go JSON stringify. And then ours is going to be the line item key. And then the new quantity, which uh, we haven't got yet. So let's get that new quantity. So uh, let's see, this is get the line item key, and then get the new quantity. So let's go const current quantity is equal to and then uh, let's go button dot parent element dot query selector and we want to get the input dot value so let's break down this line real quick so we're going button dot parent element which is this dot query selector input which is this and then we're grabbing the value and then we got to figure out if we're going up or down so uh, we can go const is up question mark is equal to uh, and to check if we're going up, we can just check if we have the class, uh, whatever I did. So let's go button dot class list dot contains and we're checking if it's up. So let's see what the up class would be. That would be this guy right here. And that'll return true or false. And then let's go const new quantity is equal to and then uh, we'll go is up question mark. And if it is up, we'll go current quantity uh, plus one. Otherwise, current quantity minus one. And uh, before we call this, let's just make sure we got all the details right. So let's go console.log. And let's just check our key and our quantity. All right, let's go back to our page. I'll refresh. Let's open the cart and let's see, we're at one. And if I hit plus, we get quantity is not defined. So I called it new quantity. So let's fix that. And then let's go back, open it. Okay, one, I click it and we get the key and then the new quantity is 11. So what's happening is, um. Where is it? Current quantity is this comes back as a string. And then if you add one to the string one, you get 11. So let's convert this to a number. And that should fix it. So let's go back. Uh, refresh, open the cart, the so one I click it and now we get the key and two and if I went down, we get the key and zero. So now let's actually call this function down here cart slash update, we're doing JSON, we're passing it uh, the key with the new quantity. And then we want to await on this to finish. And uh, since we're using await, we have to make this an async function. And uh, let's just assign this to res. And this is going to return JSON. So we have to go const uh, JSON is equal to res.json. And this is also a promise, so let's put a wait. And uh, let's just console.log JSON and see what we get. I don't know if this is gonna work, hopefully it does. Let's refresh. Now I click this, I hit plus, and we get the new cart object back. And if we look inside the items, and for that first item, shirt, I'm still seeing quantity as a uh, one. So something went wrong there. I click it a bunch more and refresh. So it's not actually updating it. 
Alright, I found the problem. It was an easy one. So if we go back to the documentation, uh, you actually have to pass it as updates. So let's go back here and let's go updates. Just like that, and that's gonna fix it. So now if we go back and uh, we go here and I refresh, let's open up the cart and we try to increase this to four. We get the new cart object back. If we go inside items, we can see the quantity is, where's quantity four. So it's working now. Now we just have to update our cart again, which we have a function for it. So we can just call that function. So let's get rid of these console.logs. And then once that's done, let's call update cart drawer. And then uh, we're actually not gonna do anything. Uh, we might do something with that JSON. Let's hold on to it for a second. Refresh. Now I go back here, I can go five, six, seven, eight, and everything's updating the totals and everything at the bottom. And we should be able to go down to zero to remove an item. Yep. So we pretty much have a fully functioning cart. I think the last thing we got to do is just update this cart count right here. And that's easy because we have this, um, this uh, cart object right here, which contains item count. So let's just make a new function, uh, update our item counts. And we'll have this accept account. And then we go document dot query selector. And we want to select all the places we want to update. So in my theme, I just have this number right here. Let's take a look at it. It has class cart count. And then let's loop through those with four each. For each element, I want to go l.textContent is equal to the count that we're going to pass in. So let's go down here and let's just go update cart item counts. And we'll pass the new item count, which is cart.item count. And I think we got it. I think we have a fully functioning cart drawer. So let's go back and try it out. Refresh, refresh. We're at 13. I add the cart. I uh, didn't update it, so we're gonna have to do it there also. But look, I'm gonna update this. And the cart count should update. So 19, 18. So where's it not updating when we add the cart? So let's take a look at that. Let's go to our add the cart uh, event listener right here. Update cart drawer. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have to get the cart count right here. So this is kind of an extra request, but we're gonna do it. So let's go get cart count. And we can just go fetch um, slash cart JS. The const res is equal to await. Const cart is equal to res.json. This is gonna be await. And then we can call that function again, update cart counts, and we'll pass it cart.item count. And I think we're good now. Let's try it one more time. Go back here, refresh. We're at 19. I add the cart. And we're still at 19. Let me refresh again. Add the cart. 21. 22. Remove 2. Back to 20. Is that right? 21. Move two, we're at 19. All right, we're working. So that's how you can create a cart drawer. Uh, I know this was a quick moving fast one, but I hope you learned a lot. Uh, all the documentation is in the description. I'll put the source code in the description. Uh, if you have a topic you want me to cover, put it in the description, hit like and subscribe. And uh, until next time, bye.